Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 18 and in this one we're going to be looking at the enthalpy of combustion for alcohols. This video is one that really um, provides a little bit of background to an investigation that you'll carry out in comparing the enthalpy of combustion values for a range of different alcohols. So we need to make sure we understand what the enthalpy of combustion is referring to and make sure that you look at a range of different alcohols. I'll pick one to sort of focus on as a, um, a walkthrough example for you, uh, but then it's important that you do a couple of these and get some comparison values uh, from your experiments. So let's look at one of the simpler types of ethanol. We know that combustion is a particular type of chemical reaction and this chemical reaction is uh, one that requires a fuel uh, which will be the alcohol in this case. It also requires oxygen and in fact the amount and availability of oxygen often affects the products of this reaction. Uh, and it's also going to be producing energy. The purpose of combustion reactions is for the generation of energy. And so as a result of that, we have a, an exothermic process where this reaction is going to release energy. And we can use that released energy, which will uh, appear in the form of heat, to heat water. So we can increase the temperature of water, look at the um, amount of water that we have and the degree to which that temperature rises, and then work towards uh, a change in enthalpy value and hopefully a molar um, enthalpy value for uh, our combustion reactions for different alcohols. It's important that you identify the alcohols that you're using for these reactions, that you also identify the reaction that's involved uh, importantly, we're going to be assuming for each of these that we have complete combustion. That may or may not be a reasonable assumption and one of the things that you would want to consider when you're looking at the reliability and validity of your results, how many times you're going to repeat this experiment in terms of uh, reliability and often with each of these fuels there it will be a theoretical value for the molar enthalpy of combustion, which you can actually compare with your experimental values to then um, make some comments about the relative validity of your methods. So make sure that you have the formula for each of the alcohols that you're using. Uh, assume complete combustion and then that will give you the products of carbon dioxide and water and from there you should be able to balance the equations. So this is a revisiting of the MCAT equation. So in this case we know that the um, the heat flow that is going to occur from the reaction through into the water is going to be found by the formula uh, MC delta T. We know that M will be the mass of the water, the temperature rise of the water is uh, delta T, and the C is the specific heat. Now one of the things that's really important about this is that when you use MCAT, these must all relate to the same substance. For the example that we're looking at, uh, this is going to be, in our case, water. One of the most common errors that students make is to um, use the value that they have for the mass of the alcohol in this position here, and that is going to need a great big red cross. Okay? We do not put the alcohol in this um, in the mass part of this equation because we have to make sure that when we are looking at using this particular equation that every single one of these variables relates to the same substance. That is, if we're talking about water, it's going to be mass of water. It's going to be specific heat of water. And it's also going to be the change in the temperature of the water. And that is why you need to make sure that you separate two stages of calculations here. The other thing that I've just changed slightly is that on most of the data sheets, you'll actually find that the value for the specific heat of water is actually given in kilograms um, rather than in grams. So joules per kilogram 
per Kelvin. And that means that the value here is often listed as 4.18 times 10 to the 3. When you convert into from when you convert from grams to kilograms, you're going to divide by a thousand. So therefore, our value for the specific heat is a thousand times bigger, and those two things will cancel each other out. I think most of the time, the quantities of water that you're going to be using to heat are going to be in mils, and therefore they're easiest transferred into grams because we know that for water, one uh, mil of water uh, weighs one gram, and therefore 100 mils will be equivalent to 100 grams and that's the value that we can put into our equation. It may also because of the size of the quantities that we tend to get with these sorts of calculations that you change joules into kilojoules just to make the numbers a little bit easier to deal with. But let's look at a, a specific example. So one of the fuels that I expect that you will use is ethanol. Here are some values. The mass loss of the spirit burner was 3.7 grams. So most of you will, I'm assuming, carry out this experiment with some little spirit burners um, that will contain the alcohol in them and will have a wick that you can light and therefore burn uh, that fuel in order to produce energy and heat the water. You'll obviously, very importantly, need to measure the mass of the burner uh, mass before and the mass after. And therefore, the mass before minus the mass after gives us the change in mass. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you will get a value of mass here. And the temptation is to put it into the MCAT formula. And we need to be very careful that we don't do that. So our first step, we're going to make sure is really clear that this is about the water and nothing else. For this value to be about the water, we need to make sure that we have a value for mass which if we're heating 100 grams, that's what's going to go there. And I'm going to put 100 because I'm going to use my Q value of 4.18. I'll get exactly the same value if I change that to 0 0.1 kilograms and multiply it by 4.18 times 10 to the 3 for kilograms. But the numbers will be the same. And then I'm going to multiply that by the um, delta T, which in this case you can see was a temperature rise for the water of 54 degrees. Now, of course, I've put it here in degrees C, and you'll also find that the uh, temperature unit that you're given usually is in uh, Kelvin. Now, of course, you can convert the initial and final temperatures into temperatures in Kelvin. But the one thing that we do know is that the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale both move in equal steps. So therefore, if we're talking about a change in temperature, then a 54, degree cha uh, 54 degrees C change in temperature is going to be equal to 54 Kelvin. The absolute values will be different, but the change will not. So once we have the change in temperature in a degree C, we can easily just convert that into Kelvin. And so that will go into our equation. And when we put those values into our equation, we'll get a certain number. Just to recap on that, the calculation, we had our mass, which was 100. We multiplied that by 4.18, which was our specific heat, and then by 54. And when we do that, we get a number of um, 2.2572 joules. Now, I've, I've run straight to the delta H value here. One of the things that we, we do need to realize is that when we're talking about delta H and not the Q value, that we're actually going to have a negative value. This is an exothermic reaction. The heat's actually been absorbed by the water, so the heat's gone into the water, and it, therefore it's gone out from the reaction, the combustion reaction that's occurred. So this is actually a negative value for the delta H because it's an exothermic reaction. Now at this stage, it's probably reasonable for you to start to express your number as uh, kilojoules because these numbers do tend to get quite large and so more than reasonable for you to convert that number into kilojoules. But, and this is the important but, this is where we need to take into account how long we were burning the fuel. So obviously this number could be any number and is almost a meaningless number if we don't 
identify exactly how much fuel was burnt in order to have the temperature uh, of 100 uh, mils of water to rise by 54 degrees. Now we know when that happened that we used 3.7 grams of fuel. So what we need to be aware of the fact is that if we standardize this, we can actually get the um, value of the energy generated uh, per gram of fuel. So the simple way to do that is to take 22.572 and divide that by 3.7. And when we do that, we get a value of, uh, of course, it's still a negative, so minus 6.2 kilojoules per gram. Now again, now this is this is a useful unit because it now allows us to compare the amount of energy that's being released in the combustion of different alcohols. We can compare each one per gram. So if we have a gram of each of these fuels and we were to, to uh, combust one gram of those fuels, what are the different amounts of energy that we could get? But being chemists, Grams isn't the term, that uh, isn't the unit that we usually use when we're making comparisons between different types of compounds. The better one and the more common one that we choose is the mole. So what we can now do is calculate what's called the molar enthalpy of combustion. And this allows us to um, make direct comparisons not only with uh, or between different alcohols, but also between the value that we've gained experimentally and the value that uh, we might expect to find theoretically if we looked it up. So in this case, what we have uh, is to calculate the molar mass of ethanol. And again, we use our periodic table to do that. So we need to uh, write down the formula C2H5OH is sort of the way we write down ethanol. So that's two carbons, six hydrogens and one oxygen. When you put those together, you end up with a value of around 46. So in this case, all I'll do is just multiply my 6.2 kilojoules per gram by 46. Uh, 0.068 I think is the exact uh, value. And that will give me a number that is around 28 5.2 kilojoules per mole. Now that's nice as a number, but what does it mean? Well, it only means something if we do two things with it. Firstly, we compare this number to other alcohols. Have you got methanol? Have you got propen-1-ol, propen-2-ol? Have you got butan-1-ol, butan-2-ol? Have you got methyl uh, butan-2-ol to compare between primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols? It will depend what you have as to what you use. But the other thing we can do is we can compare our experimental or empirical value with a theoretical value. If I look up the theoretical value for the molar enthalpy of ethanol, I find that that value is actually one about 1360 kilojoules per mole. You can see this value is significantly higher than this one. That's telling me that I may have some questions about my validity in this particular experiment. And in fact, there are a couple of factors that may have affected that particular value. Obviously, any energy loss is going to be very significant. So as the ethanol is combusting, if it's hitting the air, if it's hitting any other objects, it's going to transfer some of that energy to those other objects or to the air. And we know that uh, heat radiates. It doesn't just go in a single direction. It radiates in all directions. So some of that energy is going to be lost. It's not all going to go into heating the water. And that's our assumption is all of the energy from combustion is being used to heat the water. The other thing that could actually affect this too is whether or not the type of combustion is complete or incomplete. If you find that you're generating a lot of um, carbon as soot, for example, then that's an indication that we have incomplete combustion, that there's insufficient oxygen for this combustion reaction to occur. And if that's the case, then obviously we're not going to be able to generate the um, high enough 
amounts of energy that we would expect if we were um, able to provide sufficient oxygen for complete combustion. That is likewise going to affect our value and again in the same sort of direction. So energy loss is going to mean we're not going to collect as much energy as we would expect, so that's going to drop our value. Incomplete combustion may also mean that we have less energy than we would otherwise have for complete combustion. So combined together, these sorts of things can significantly um, lower the value that we expect to get theoretically when we do it experimentally. This is a great experiment to give you a look at um, concepts like validity, reliability, thinking about your controls, thinking about the factors that can affect the value that you collect in your experiments, uh, and definitely worth exploring a few different uh, alcohols in order to compare the molar enthalpy of combustion for a range of different alcohols. And thanks for watching.